Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Welcome to Indiana University Bloomington's Jumpstart 2023. My name is Vincent Isom. I am the director of the 21st Century Scholars Program here at IU Bloomington. And I'm going to have our other presenters introduce themselves as you'll be hearing from them soon. All right, hi everyone. My name is Lauren Mixon. I am a senior assistant director in the Office of Admissions. I work mostly with the greater Fort Wayne, Northeast Indiana area, but I am so excited to be here this evening and happy to answer any and all questions about the admissions and the college application process. Hi everybody, Zachary Cullum with the Indiana Commission for Higher Education. We do all the state supported financial aid in Indiana. Uh, I am an outreach coordinator for the Southwest region, uh, which spans from Evansville to Bloomington. Uh, so if you are not in one of those areas or kind of in the middle of that, uh, I am going to drop a link to the outreach coordinator map uh, so you can get in contact with uh, your representative that is in your area. Uh, usually we go to the schools to make sure that you're on track uh, and, and get you into our scholar track system. But uh, if you have any questions, uh, make sure that you drop those into the chat and we'll uh, make sure you're taken care of. Thanks for joining us. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Ben Agan, and I'm a senior associate director in the Office of Scholarships. Uh, we're one of the central resources for scholarships on campus. And while we don't offer all the scholarships, we're a great resource to connect and answer questions that you have uh, about scholarships. So, so glad you're here tonight and looking forward to answering any questions that you have about scholarships. Hi, everyone. I'm Amy Hall with the Office of Student Financial Assistance. Easier just to know me as financial aid here at IU. And we are so excited to be able to talk to you tonight, and we're going to give you a little overview of what you can do to put yourself in the best position with your all your resources that will be available to you at IU as a 21st century scholar. So you hear the wonderful individuals that we have here for you tonight to give you all the information that you'll need as you begin thinking about hopefully coming to Indiana University or any other institution this upcoming year, how to prepare yourself and the various things that you need to do to be prepared for Indiana University or any other university. So with that said, I'm going to stop sharing this slide and our colleague will begin talking about your admissions. All right, hopefully you all can see that. Um, again, my name is Lauren Mixon. I'm going to be sharing some admissions information about Indiana University Bloomington. Um, if you did not know, there are several Indiana campuses across the state of Indiana, um, Indiana University campuses across the state of Indiana. So this information is about Indiana University Bloomington specifically. Um, so IU Bloomington, just to give you some more background and information, has about 33,000 undergraduate students. We have students who with an additional 10,000 graduate students. So we have about 43,000 students on campus every year. We have students from all 50 states and 140 different countries. So we also work very hard to make sure that while we are um, the flagship school for the state of Indiana and admit and have a lot of Indiana residents on campus. We also work very hard to make sure that we are getting students from all across this country and other countries as well. Just some ideas and some facts and figures about how we support our students on campus from all across um, the country and all around 
the world. We have about 24% of our students on campus who are domestic students of color or underrepresented students. And so there are lots of ways that we try to support students on campus. One of those ways is through our culture centers. Um, so we have six culture centers on campus that provide support and programming for students um, and provide a home away from home. Also our disability services for students. If you have any um, disabilities or needs for accommodations of any kind to help make accessing resources and learning more equitable and accessible, disability services for students is there to help support you. And then of course our office for the Vice President of Diversity, Equity and Multicultural Affairs, which consists of many different programs, um, staff who are there to support students um, and assist them, many of whom you will hear from this evening. So a little bit about the academics at IU. IU has 12 schools and colleges that make up our university. You are pretty familiar, I'm sure, with at least a few of them. You might have heard of the Jacobs School of Music or possibly even the Kelly School of Business. Um, or the O'Neill School of Public and Environmental Affairs. One of the great things about attending IU is that no matter what you're interested in studying, you will have the opportunity to find really amazing programs here on our campus. Many of our programs are among the best in the country, some even among the best in the world. And so with these 12 schools, we have over 200 majors on campus. So you really have the freedom to explore a variety of things that you might be interested in. Students have the ability to mix and match majors and minors in a way that works best for them. And if you can't find a major that works right for you, we also have an individualized major program. So the individualized major program actually allows students to create their own major. So students have created some really interesting things like underwater archeology span or enigmatology, which is the study of puzzles. So you get a lot of freedom when it comes to exploring these programs. As I mentioned before, you can mix and match majors in a way that works best for you and whatever your specific career goals are. So about 60% of IU students graduate with more than one credential. So it is very easy if you have multiple interests, I always encourage students, there are ways to explore those um, and to have a double major or to have a major and a minor. There are definitely options when it comes to that. Now across our schools, when it comes to the application process and actually entering into your program of study, we have two ways. First is called the university division. This is for all of our students who are either still exploring their options because you don't actually have to declare a major until the end of your sophomore year, or people who have multiple things in mind and are still deciding on one, um, or who just don't simply have a plan yet and want to take the time to figure it out. So the university division is for those students that allows them to have an advisor who is an expert in all of our schools and all of our majors and really helps guide you to find a path that's best for you and helps you find the major that fits for you. Direct admission is offered to students who meet specific direct admission criteria um, from our schools on campus. Most of our schools offer direct admission, and if you meet that school's specific direct admission criteria, then you will be notified that you have been directly admitted into that school or program and can start taking those necessary prerequisite classes right away. But whether or not you're direct admit or you're going through the university division, you will still have all of the guidance and support that you need um, from our faculty and staff. We have some of the best faculty around um, and many people would be surprised that given how large IU is, our average class size is actually 33 students and our student to faculty ratio is 18 to one. So these faculty members are not only just going to be your, your educators, but they're also going to be your mentors and they'll be your connections to your field of study. A little bit about housing and life on campus. Um, all first year students are required to stay on campus during their first year. 
We have 13 residence halls and they are grouped into four residential hall neighborhoods. And these neighborhoods are of course located in different places around campus. And this really gives you the opportunity to choose exactly which neighborhood you want to be in, where you could see yourself fitting in most on campus. These neighborhoods, like I mentioned, have different residence halls that have different floor plans and layouts. But in addition to these traditional halls, we also have 20 plus living learning communities as well. So if you'd like to live with other people who have either a shared academic interest as you, shared hobbies, um, or a shared identity, then you can live with other students who have these shared interests and hobbies and identities with them um, in one of our 20 plus living learning communities. So that was a really, really fast overview of campus. I want to give you all a really quick overview of the application process. As you are going to apply, there are two ways to apply to IU. We have the Apply IU application, which is hosted on our website. The Apply IU application allows you to apply to multiple IU campuses with just one application um, and one application fee. And we are also hosted on the Common App. The Common App allows you to apply to multiple schools across the country, again, with just one application. So we do not have a preference for which application platform you use. Please choose the one that works best for you and the schools that you are most interested in applying to. Once you have completed your application, you also need to pay the $65 application fee. You'll also wanna include your IU specific essay. This is about 200 to 400 words about your academic plans or career goals and any special interests that you may have. And if you've encountered any challenges or circumstances in your academic journey, you can share those with us in your essay as well. You'll also need to submit your official high school transcript. So please work with your school guidance counselor to make sure that you are sending that official high school transcript directly to IU. And we are also test optional. So it is up to you on whether or not you would like to include your SAT and ACT test scores. But to have a complete application, you must do the online application, pay the application fee, submit your essay and your official high school transcript. If you do decide to submit test scores, uh, we can talk more about that in just a second. So November 1st, this is an important date. I want you all to remember November 1st. This is our early action non-binding deadline. It is also the deadline for highest scholarship consideration. So if you remember nothing else from today, please remember to have a complete application in by November 1st. This is a great way to be considered for a lot of opportunities on IU's campus. So if you do decide to include your test scores, again, you do not have to. It is completely up to you. We are test optional. And so you really do get the freedom to choose what is best for you. But if you do decide to include your scores, you can also self-report them, meaning you can type them in on your application. Uh, the reason this is a benefit is because sometimes it costs money to send your scores from the testing agency. So having the opportunity to write them in saves you money on the front end. And then when you decide IU Bloomington is the place that you would like to go, then we will request your official scores um, at a later date. Just to give you all some context, here's our admission standards and what we're looking for. So we're looking for students who have completed at least 34 high school credits that show college readiness and college preparedness. Please keep in mind, we do have some requirements that might be above and beyond what your high school requires for graduation. So for example, IU Bloomington requires two years of a foreign language. Uh, that might be above and beyond what your high school requires. And we also require one additional semester of math after you've taken a year of algebra, geometry, and then algebra two. We need one more additional semester of math um, and it must be pre-calc, calc, or trig. So make sure that you are talking to your counselors and reviewing the uh, requirements for the schools that you are interested in attending. We do look at GPA, both weighted and unweighted, whatever is officially reported on your high school tra transcript. Again, test scores, it is completely up to you on whether or not you would like to include those. Um, and then please make sure that you take time writing and submitting your application essay. 
The essay, I feel like, is where students have the opportunity to make the most impact on their application. So please make sure that you're taking the time and handling your essay with care and sharing lots of great detail and information with us. Just to give you a better understanding, here are the students we admitted in the fall of 2022. So our middle 50% range, so 25% of the students we admitted were below these ranges and 25% of the students we admitted were above these ranges. So our middle 50% range was between a 3.6 and a 4.0. And then our middle 50% for the SAT was between a 12.30 and a 14.20. And our middle 50% for the ACT was between a 27 and a 32. Again, please make sure that you have your application in by November 1st. That is again, our early action non-binding deadline. If you have a complete application by November 1st, you'll hear a response from us no later than January 15th. February 1st, this is our regular decision deadline. Um, any applications we receive after February 1st are reviewed on a case-by-case -case space available basis. And if you apply by February 1st, you will hear a response from us no later than March 15th. Oh, that's a little bit about that. We'll share more about that later. Sorry, I forgot to hide that slide. Awesome. So this is my information. If you have any questions regarding admissions, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. Um, that is my email and phone number on the screen. Feel free to screenshot that or write that down, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you. All right. Uh, I hope you guys are having a great night. Thank you so much uh, for being here. Wanted to go over what your rights and responsibilities are as a 21st century scholar. So just as a reminder, the 21st century scholars, uh, it pays up to 100% of tuition at any of the Indiana uh, two and four year public institutions. So uh, it, when you come to uh, IU, it will pay all the tuition and mandatory fees. Uh, we've got an exciting kind of supplemental grant that they're going to talk to you about in a little bit called the IU Covenant. Uh, but the 21st century scholars, it only pays for tuition and mandatory fees. Uh, so that is something to be considering uh, with your uh, kind of college decision. Uh, if you end up going to a private school or proprietary school, uh, it pays a, a partial tuition. Uh, and th that's something that we do not include room and board, books, housing, food, things like that. So uh, the more scholarship money and the financial aid money that you have, the better opportunities that you're gonna have post-graduation because uh, hopefully you don't have too much student loans. Uh, so this is uh, available for four years of tuition, so eight semesters. You can do that all, like if you wanna start with an associate's degree and then uh, go for a bachelor's degree, you could do that. If you wanna use all four years at an associate's degree level, you can do that too. Uh, but whatever your goal is, uh, we want you to make uh, sure that you use that. Students can take a gap year with the 21st century scholars. Uh, it's not usually suggested, uh, but that is something that we, uh, you will be able to do uh, so to defer uh, one year after graduation. So uh, if you graduate spring of 2024, you just need to be enrolled fall of 2025. Uh, and then that way uh, you can continue to utilize your 21st century scholars. Uh, just some of the pledge requirements, uh, that's something that you have to graduate with at least a 2.5 GPA and at least a core 40 diploma. Uh, it does not matter if it's weighted or unweighted, it's just whatever your school uh, reports to the Indiana Commission for Higher Education. You also need to file the uh, free application for federal student aid, the FAFSA, by uh, the state finan financial aid deadline, which is April 15th. Uh, so April 15th will guarantee you that that uh, state financial aid uh, is there as long as you qualify uh, for, you know, the, the other uh, requirements. Uh, also, you need to apply to an ed eligible Indiana school as a high school senior uh, and enroll in the college uh, within one year of graduation. So even if you are taking that gap year, we still need you to file the FAFSA and we still need you to complete a college application and you can just defer admissions. 
So uh, as far as uh, some of the other pledge requirements, uh, you need to maintain a satisfactory academic progress. That looks different at each college, uh, but typically it's at least a 2.0 GPA and uh, completing at least 67% of the classes that you take. But make sure that you work with the financial aid office. They should be able to let you know what that satisfactory academic progress is. When you get into college, you need to complete at least 30 credit hours per year. Uh, so that would be taking five classes a semester, essentially. Uh, so uh, five in the fall, five in the spring. If you uh, do like four classes in the fall, four classes in the spring, you can uh, finish up those classes in the summer if you want to, or if you have any dual credit or AP credit um, that you earned in high school, that is, we will create a, what's called a credit bank for you that you can pull uh, credit hours in to get you up to the 30 credit hours. So if that is something that you're going to be taking less than 15 credit hours a semester, uh, we want you to contact somebody at the Commission for Higher Education, and we can verify that those credits are available for you to use uh, so you have all the information to kind of make an, an informed decision. So if you have to maybe medically withdraw for some of the classes, uh, if there are some extenuating circumstances, that is something that we can take account for. So, but make sure that you reach out to us before things become a problem. Uh, and in that way, we can kind of best advise you about what your next step are, steps are. Um, also, you have pledged not to do any legal drugs, alcohol before the age of 21, or commit a crime or delinquent act. So I tell students, I don't wanna see your face on the news for doing anything stupid uh, because those consequences, or th those will have consequences. Uh, we, if you get a DUI your freshman year, uh, it will remove you from the 21st Century Scholars Program. So be making wise decisions that do not affect future you uh, because that can be might be the difference between you getting out of school debt-free uh, or you having to pay back student loans. And we don't want that. So, uh, and then also complete the Scholar Success program, uh, which hopefully uh, you have started on these. If not, it doesn't take too long for you to get uh, on track for those. So there are three requirements that we have uh, you do each year. Uh, so these are a lot of things that you are going to be doing just by being a high school student anyway. Uh, so there's three videos that we have you watch that you take a quiz afterwards. Um, there is a workplace experience, take a career interest assessment, visit a college campus. So if you do the virtual college campus tour here at uh, IU, that would actually count for this or the requirement. So um, all of you should have taken the SAT earlier this year, uh, the junior year SAT that's in school. Uh, if not, you will need to take the ACT or SAT, uh, even though it may not be required for admissions. Uh, where you end up going. Uh, so that is something that that in-school SAT would qualify for this. But if not, make sure that you are making accommodations uh, to take that on a Saturday. Uh, that's something that you do qualify for a fee waiver where you do not have to pay uh, for the SAT or ACT, and you can get that from your guidance counselor. So hopefully all of you have done that, but that is something uh, that it is required for admission or for uh, 21st century scholars. Uh, and the way that you check these requirements off uh, is on Scholar Track. So that's how we organize and manage the 21st Century Scholars Program. Uh, so if you're not on that, uh, we can work either with your uh, guidance counselor uh, or we have, uh, there's eight of us that go around uh, to actually uh, help you with these uh, SSP activities. So uh, if you have any questions, reach out to one of us and we uh, can get you uh, taken care of. Uh, but scholartrack.in.gov. So senior year, some of the things that you're going to want to uh, look at, complete all of your SSP activities before June 30th. I strongly encourage you to get it done before Christmas uh, because that way you don't have to worry uh, about anything besides making sure that you have a 2.5 GPA and core 40 diploma uh, your uh, second semester. So FAFSA, get all of the uh, eligibility requirements or the SSP activities done uh, before June 30th. 
Uh, make sure that you file that FAFSA before April 15th. Uh, so April 16th, you are not going to be eligible for the 21st Century Scholars or state financial aid unless we extend the deadline. So we want to make sure that you do not um, uh, miss out on that. Also apply to an eligible Indiana institution. Uh, I can put a list of those uh, in the chat, uh, but that is something uh, that you would need to do that even if you are taking a gap year. So one thing that uh, we are required to do by the state legislature is is make sure that uh, students and families are within uh, the financial means test. Uh, so uh, that is something that students have to demonstrate uh, continued financial need. Uh, so essentially, in order to be eligible for the 21st century scholars, you had to be at 150% of the federal poverty level. Uh, in order to stay eligible, uh, you have to uh, be within 370% of that. Uh, so we essentially double the threshold for, for you to be eligible. So just to kind of put into perspective, uh, a family of two, the maximum would be about $65,000. And then we add about uh, $16,800 uh, for every member that's in the household. So that's something that we can go over kind of separately uh, in the event that we uh, need to talk about that. Uh, if you are eligible for a Pell Grant, or you are enrolled uh, through legal guardianship or foster care, uh, we do not do this financial means test. Uh, but for students who uh, are no longer eligible uh, due to income, household income, uh, that is something that you do, uh, or you are eligible for a one-time award of $2,500. So if you're not eligible, but uh, maybe your circumstances have changed, that's something that we can look at doing a professional judgment uh, to have uh, that change in income or household size reflected on the uh, FAFSA. You should be getting scholar resources, gr uh, grade guides from your uh, guidance counselors, and also uh, communications from uh, the, the Commission for Higher Education. So that's something that we want to make sure that you have the most up-to-date address. So when you create uh, that scholar track account, that's something that you'll be able to update uh, your, your information on. Uh, and then finally, I am the outreach coordinator for the Southwest region. Uh, but if that's something that you have any questions, feel free to reach out to that, us. Uh, learnmoreindiana.org slash scholars is a great website. Website, uh, or you can give us a call at 888-528-4719. So uh, I'll answer some of the, um, the messages in the chat if you have any questions, but if you have a uh, situation that you would like to, um, to talk about uh, with a little more privacy, please email me and we'll uh, make sure that we get you connected with the right person. So thank you so much and uh, let us know if you have any questions. Awesome. I want to add real quickly in the chat, we place that your application fee for IU is waived as a 21st century scholar. So that $65 that was mentioned, you will not have to pay. It's waived because you are a 21st century scholar. And I notice a hand up. If you have a question, put it in the Q&A and it will be answered. Thank you so much. All right, so uh, my name's Ben Agan, and I'm gonna start uh, next. So just bear with me as I share my screen. I'm gonna go a little slow because there's a lot of great information and just give you a little bit of a break as I uh, get my screenshots going. Nope, oh, that's not working. You see my screen? It came off. Your screen was shared and then it went away.
the work now, Ben? There we go. Awesome. Well, uh, my name is Ben Agan. I'm a senior associate director in the Office of Scholarships. Um, and I'm gonna start with just two pieces of information that I hope that you can take away from the few slides I have. Um, number one, uh, Lauren has already shared that the most important deadline for uh, highest scholarship consideration is November 1st. So if you take that, num that data away, it's making sure you have a complete application by November 1st. Uh, that's the most important piece of information. And then number two is that if you, as you're navigating scholarships at IU, if you reach out to our office, we're here to help. Um, and so this, uh, this image on here is our website in the top right-hand corner. Uh, there's a contact button that has our phone number and our email. Um, our office does not award all the scholarships at IU, but we're really the front door for scholarships at IU. And so our job is to help you navigate looking for scholarships. And so well, I'm gonna share a little bit of other information as well. I just wanna make sure that you know that as you're navigating the process of looking for scholarships at IU, uh, we're here to help. You're always welcome to reach out to us and we'll help you navigate that process at IU. Um, so our office, we do award some scholarships, uh, but we also help connect you with resources and scholarships on campus and in the schools and different programs. Um, at IU, uh, we do offer a variety of scholarships, um, both based on academic achievement and other factors. Um, we have uh, merit-based scholarships, which are based on academic qualifications, um, and those do not require financial need necessarily. Uh, other scholarships that require financial need are need-based, uh, and that is based on financial need that is determined by the FAFSA, or the Free Application for Federal Student Aid, uh, which I know Amy um, from Financial Aid will talk about more as well. So students that you can earn a combination of different scholarships, and, and that can include a combination of uh, merit scholarships, as well as need-based scholarships and need-based financial aid as well. Again, to make sure you get the highest scholarship consideration, uh, be sure you apply for uh, uh, admission to IU by November 1st, um, and that will get you consideration for uh, IU academic scholarships. Uh, for in-state residents, uh, these are called our provost scholarships. They are awarded based on academic performance and rigor. So that's uh, how well you do in your classes, um, as well as what type of classes that you take. Uh, the award amounts uh, that we offer every year uh, vary. Uh, this year, they were awarded based uh, between 1,000 and 7,000, and they are renewable on all four years as long as you meet the eligibility criteria. So they are a significant amount of money, and um, it's important that you apply to number one to get considered for these scholarships. Also, uh, meeting the November 1st deadline gets you consideration for our selective scholarship application, which is an invite-only application that's used by a number of schools and programs that award scholarships. Uh, consideration for this is based on uh, criteria in your application. Um, and if you are selected uh, based on the criteria of what schools or programs you're eligible for, you'll be notified via email uh, and just given specific instructions about how to apply and, and what steps there are. The SSA, along with other uh, opportunities to apply for scholarships, is housed in the same system. I um, mean, this can be accessed through one, which is our portal at IU. And so if you can see in the top left-hand corner, there's the dollar sign with the graduation cap. Uh, that's a really great resource as you apply for scholarships. You'll complete what's called a general application. You'll fill that out, and that's viewed by all uh, scholarship providers that use this system. And then you'll be able to fill out uh, any of the uh, opportunities that you'll see in there. And um, there's significant uh, scholarships that are available in there. So for example, the Cox Scholars Program, which is a full ride to IU, um, and a variety of different scholarship opportunities that are available you can access through this, uh, through this portal. So again, uh, the main thing, main thing I want to take away again is November 1st. And then as you navigate this, you know, going to college is a lot of steps, there's a lot of applications. And as you need help navigating scholarships, our office is a great resource. We're uh, always there to help you as you navigate that. Um, if you have any other questions tonight, I'll be here and I'll turn it over to Amy. Hi everyone, are you seeing my screens? No, not yet. We see your name. Okay, let's see. I press share. Now we do. All righty. Well, I am so excited to be here. This is one of my favorite groups to work with because um, I have been in your shoes. I am a 21st century mom. My two kids were educated in Indiana and at Purdue um, being a 21st century scholar. So I understand the value and the gift that 
21st century offers to students, giving you an opportunity to say, wow, I've already got uh, tuition and mandatory fees covered. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the FAFSA and need that um, I know Ben was talking about. So the FAFSA is the free application of federal student aid. And I wanna um, highlight the first word free. If somebody offers to help you with the FAFSA and they ask for money, just kind of say, no, that sounds a little sketchy. Um, it's a very menu thread and it actually will get easier. Um, there is a simplification process. And so when you are filling out the FAFSA, in your senior year of high school. It normally opens up every October. This year, because of the new revamping of the FAFSA, you will probably see it available to you in December is what we're being told by the feds. So I'm hoping that each one and every one of you will do your FAFSA right when it becomes available. Um, and it will be something that um, you can get that information in right away. I did notate that the state's deadline does say you can do it all the way up until April 15th of your um, senior year, but we really encourage you to get that information to um, us and to other schools early so you can start getting an information uh, both about, you know, deciding where you want to study, how it feels and how it fits with your, um, your goals to, um, for your college experience, but also to look at the financial piece. Um, and we need this information for us to be able to make a determination on what you're eligible for, for need-based aid, federal aid, state aid, and then institutional aid. And we'll talk about a compliment to the 21st century scholar that IU Bloomington has called the covenant. Um, what will be calculated with your FAFSA is called the student aid index. It's an index to help us determine your eligibility needs. It does not really reflect the expenses you're gonna pay, be required to pay. So just kind of consider it as, it lets us know where you sit in, uh, uh, in, the, in, in an index perspective. So that federal calculation takes a look at income, household size, and assets. So here's where we, why we look at the need and why it's important. We take the cost of attendance and we subtract the index, which is the student aid index, and that tells you your financial needs. So let's look at what it might cost. If you're looking, if you were going to be attending um, uh, going forward, actually, I should have changed the date on that. It should be for the 23-24 school year then cost of attendance to attend at IU Bloomington is going to be, oh, I do have wrong numbers, 28,670. And that is your tuition and mandatory fees. And that is what you already have covered from tuition and fees um, covered by the 21st Century Scholars Program. So if you had no other aid, no other resource, then you would look at um, the difference um, for you to look at. But we wanna help you Kind of understand some of those things. So you've got tuition and fees, room and board, uh, make up your direct costs. That pretty much is what your bursar bill is going to be as a first year student living in the dorms, having a meal plan, and um, having a uh, cost for tuition and, and classes and things. But keep in mind, there's other expenses involved with being a student. You still have to buy books, and most times your books are, are independent from uh, any of your bursar bills, except for if you have a class that does have an e-textbook, that would be charged directly to your bill. But most of your books, you go to the bookstore, you go to Amazon, you and I would encourage you to look for ways to keep those costs low. You can look at renting books, you can use buy used books. You don't have to buy the brand new stinking book that costs a lot more money. Um, and then transportation is getting you to and from the university. Um, so oftentimes you, you come for the uh, fall, you go home for the Thanksgiving break, and then you come back um, to finish up school and you go back home at the end of the semester. And that's equivalent for fall and spring. So when you're um, looking at that transportation, you know, if it's just coming down from Indianapolis and mom's dropping you off and picking you up for Thanksgiving, she may not charge you gas money. But if you actually have to kind of calculate, oh, I need a bus ticket to be able to go up to the region, you might want to look at what your particular um, costs are. This is the same for somebody that might have to buy an airplane ticket to go all the way to California or New York or something like that. But here in Indiana, we don't have to worry about large transportation expenses. And personal expenses are just what they are. It's the kind of things you spend money on normally. But when you're living by yourself, you might have to go and get your own um, ibuprofen for headaches or get laundry soap to do your laundry. Or you just want to go out with your friends and go out for Friday night pizza and you need cash for that. Um, and so that's where those personal expenses need to be kind of calculated in. 
overall, ultimately your cost of attendance um, is what your maximum aid could be. So dependent upon all those scholarships that you can track on top of all that, or we'll talk about some things that are, are need-based as well. So your A can be a multitude of, of things. And I look at this, if I had a, a picture on this screen, it would be like a puzzle pieces. So you wanna focus on the gift aid. The gift aid are things you do not have to pay back. So you could have scholarships. Those could be the academic scholarships that you've earned, um, the merit scholarships from different programs like the Hudson and Holland. They could be department scholarships coming from the area and where you're gonna be studying or other scholarships coming sometimes from IU and or outside. The grants are what we I indicate when we have that index and finding out what you're eligible for, it may say you qualify for a federal Pell Grant or even a supplemental grant, which is an additional grant um, here that uh, at IU is able to give to our neediest of students, those with a zero student aid index. Um, or, and then of course, another grant you're receiving is the 21st Century Scholarship. That's because you've been eligible for that based on your early application back in middle school and you're continuing showing that you're meeting the means testing that Zach talked about. And then IU offers um, additional kind of grants that support that is called the 21st Century Covenant. And we'll talk about that. And then there's also a program in, here on campus called the Groups Program. And just so you know, you can be in the Groups Program and still be a 21st Century Scholar. And the Groups Grant and the Covenant Grant are calculated in the same method. Um, it's just kind of pulling from two different pots of money. Then the students kind of look at saying, okay, based on where my financial need will land and those aid opportunities, um, then I might still need to look at ways to help myself. And I always encourage students to look first at student employment. You may qualify for work study that is a need-based aid. And those are students that indicate on their FAFSA they're, they're interested in work study. So I would encourage all of you when you do your FAFSA to let them know, let us know that you're interested in work study. Um, but there's also many, many hourly worker jobs on campus as well. So you can have a work study job or a regular hourly job. And to you, it's the same job. It's the same. You get paid hourly wages and it comes back to you in the form of your uh, biweekly paycheck. If you do qualify for work study, you can go to that employer and say, I qualify for work study. They get excited to hire you because you get the opportunity. They get the opportunity to have some of those wages paid by federal dollars. So um, both of those are in a position for you to help yourself. But let's say based on your financial need, and I'll show you some calculation, you wanted to work, so you make about $3,000 a year. You work between 10 and 15 hours a week, which is something very doable for a college student on top of all the other things you wanna do to have the college experience. And that gives you that cash flow that we kind of talked about, those personal expenses and books. You can kind of take care of some of those without having to borrow. So if I made $3,000, that's $12,000 I didn't borrow in four years. So that's something that's positive in my book. And then the last piece we talked to students about if they still have a gap in funding is they look at student loan options. There could be federal loans through the um, federal loan program that you automatically get offered from completing a FAFSA. Um, you don't have to take them. We, we offer them for you for you to make those considerations. There are private student loans and there are also parent federal parent plus loans that parents can help students, but those loans are in the parent's name, but those funds go to help um, pay for part of those college expenses and also other loan options that sometimes parents look at, maybe like home equity loans and things like that. So I wanna share with you the important and exciting thing that IU Bloomington has that not all even our other campuses have, and you may not um, get some of those additional resources at other campuses and other universities and IU Covenant is really one of the premier programs that really helps support the 21st century students. So what it is, is we consider three factors, tuition and fees, room and board, books and supplies. So that's direct cost plus books. And we say, we're gonna look and make a, a review and analysis on what um, you would we would be able to help support you with. So this year it's $25,630 if you added those three factors together. We're gonna subtract, oh, I forgot to correct this one. We called it EFC, but it's gonna be called subtracting the student aid index. So once you know your student aid index, you subtract that. So that's where the need component comes into. Then we're gonna subtract all federal grants, state grants and scholarships. And the scholarships would include the 21st century scholarship that's already covering tuition and fees. So after all that calculation, if you still have remaining need, 
of the 25, 630 minus these categories, then a, a 21st century covenant would be um, awarded to meet that need. So the couple things that are not even reviewed on the uh, 21st century covenant is the transportation and personal expenses. So that you want to kind of look at is no matter what, it's kind of my EFC or excuse me, my student aid index, having a hard time transitioning to new terms, um, and the the kind of the remaining portion. The, in this case, it'd be $3,040. So I can look at this. If I have a $3,040 can be earned um, maybe by part-time employment. We already talked about that. It'd be easy to get a job and make $3,000 a year. Or if I got an extra external scholarships from other sources here at IU, um, I can get external scholarships and bring those with me. And if it's under $3,040 in this example, it would never impact other aid. So if you had more than that, let's say I earned a $5,000 external scholarship, it would reduce the IU covenant by a couple thousand dollars because that's being said that that scholarship is helping to meet some of your financial need. And that's the difference of need-based aid. Oops, I went backwards. So this is an example of financial aid. Notice for a 21st century scholar that they would have received this year. And I'm sorry, it's kind of in a, um, a little box index, but we're gonna remind you what the cost of attendance is. We're gonna tell you all the gift aid that you've been posted with um, at the point in time we send this out. And that's why the earlier you get your FAFSA done, the more, the quicker we get that information. All the scholarships getting posted to your account, you can really get an idea of what your numbers would be. So this is an exam, example of a, because I can see with the federal supplemental grant student, um, I know that they're a zero student aid index individual, which means they have the maximum need. This student doesn't have family resources that can help support additional expenses. So this is a student that has um, the maximum need. So they're getting the full 25, 630 covered in all gift aid, just like we talked about earlier. Um, so they do still have that gap of $3,040. They can easily fill it with either a subsidized loan or maybe you could go get a part-time job. Um, and then you can see that the, ultimately the family responsibility would be zero. Um, so this student may need to take advantage of a loan and you can certainly do that, but I would highly encourage the student to look at a, a part-time job on campus. So what you're looking at is the net cost. Net cost is cost of attendance minus gift aid. Once you know your net cost, you can compare what other schools are offering you as well to see if it's, it's kind of more apples to apples comparison. So if I have a zero SAC uh, student aid index, that means that I'm gonna have full gift aid up to the 25,630 because we know that you need to have that tuition and fees, room and board and books um, and resources to cover that with all the combination of your gift aid. And you'll have a gap of 3,040. Here's an example of a student with a $7,000 SAI and they would have total gift aid of up to 18,000. So that's basically this amount minus the 7,000 that gives you the 18,000. So what would this student look like? 28,000 is a full cost of attendance minus the 18,000 in gift aid. So there's a $10,000 gap for this family. How are they gonna look at that? Well, I'm gonna encourage the student to get a part-time job. They can take advantage of the uh, loans that are automatically offered to them. And then there's a small gap of maybe $1,500. And if maybe the family can look at this, maybe they have some savings, maybe they have a college savings plan, maybe they have, um, um, other options that they could look at. So taking a look at your student loans or family resources um, would be a, an idea. There's also even a payment plan. If you have a small balance remaining, you may be able to take care of a payment plan with the bursar. So maybe mom and dad don't have to borrow um, additional loans to help you with school. So just understand your financial situation makes a difference. Um, and it's going to be what that calculation is and what we can do. But you can kind of just take the uh, tuition and fees, room and board, books and supplies, take those three factors, subtract your um, student aid index, and that'll give you an idea of how much gift aid you'll have. After that, you can start looking at how is that going to parcel out. Um, this is a good time to talk about you can plan and develop a budget so you can build that life skill, but also use it every year when you're in school. I'm going to give you some resources. Student Central is going to be the place you want to contact if you have any questions about financial aid. We, I've been from our Office of Scholarships. We always want to promote um, 
looking for ways to find those free resources and that's those scholarship opportunities. And then of course, if you wanna talk about loans, um, that's is my department, um, go to loanhelp at iu.edu and we're happy to kind of help you do some loan planning and kind of just understanding what student loans look like. You'll be completing the FAFSA each year and making sure you at least hit that state deadline of April 15th so we don't run into that. And another um, helpful resource on campus is just helping you get money smart is a moneysmarts.iu.edu. So take a look at that website. I'm gonna pass it on, thank you. My name is Vincent Isom. I am the director of the 21st Century Scholars Program here at Indiana University Bloomington. And I am here to share some wonderful news that we have about our program and about what we have to offer you at Indiana University. First, our mission, the IU 21st Century Scholars Program is administered by the IU Office of the Vice President for Diversity, Equity, and Multicultural Affairs, OBP DEMA. Helps low and middle income families meet the cost of college by providing students with a wide array of support activities and services on campus, including academic tutoring, peer mentoring, housing, and professional workshops such as financial aid and overseas study scholarships. Our mission is to provide high quality service in the form of advocacy and holistic programming designed to promote academic achievement, career development, retention, scholarship maintenance, timely graduation at IUB, and to help them understand their role in making a positive impact on the city of Bloomington and beyond. We are here for you. I have a team consisting of myself, my assistant director and lead academic advisor, Jen Berry, Rebecca Guest-Scott, my advisor for career and initiatives, Andrew Schwartz, my advisor for the SMART program, Rebecca Brown, special projects coordinator, Victoria Witham, who serves as our administrative assistant, and also you'll see in the building providing uh, motherly support, uh, and she takes care of us all here in our building and the staff. Uh, Rebecca Hayes, who is a AmeriCorps member, that means that she's a representative from the state that's here to assist with some programming. And her primary function is to make sure that you are retaining your 21st century scholarship and knowledgeable about all the ins and outs. And if there's any problem, she's here to support you and to get you the assistance you need to straighten out your scholarship. What we provide as the 21st Century Scholars Program, we provide a location, which is 300 North Eagleson Avenue. This location is here to serve as your home away from home. Um, I am the director and my primary role is to serve as your advocate. If you have any issue taking place on campus, make sure you inform us. If there's anything you don't understand and need assistance in understanding, make sure you inform us. Uh, and I'm also there looking into the future and looking for different opportunities to enhance your experience. That is what I do here to advocate for you. We have specialized academic advisors, as I shown, on the previous slide, these individuals are here again to make sure you're academically successful, making sure you have access to career preparation and career partners, making sure that you are able to succeed and do the best that you can do. Particularly if you are in the STEM field, that's a challenging area. We have specialized programming offering, offered through our assistant director for STEM majors. So be on the lookout for that if you are a STEM major and you're coming into Indiana University. Special Projects Coordinator provides communication through our newsletter and email. You can contribute to that newsletter. If you wanna be a part of that newsletter, we welcome you. We always have students that are a part of that newsletter. Program Student Volunteer Opportunities, she shares 
what we're doing as a program that you can volunteer to help out with when you are here as an IU student. When I'm talking to incoming students, they come for a campus visit or I go to their school. Sometimes 21st century scholar college students will join me and be there to answer any questions for parents or students about what it means to be a 21st century scholar at Indiana University Bloomington. We also have, again, as I mentioned earlier, the AmeriCorps member who is our retention specialist. We want to make sure that you're maintaining that scholarship and knowing the ins and outs so you don't unintentionally put yourself in jeopardy with your scholarship. And a vast array of programming, again, holistic, that means we're looking at all the things to make your experience better. We're looking at the things that make you a better candidate for future employment and that makes you happy with your decision to come to Indiana University. Specialized advising, I mentioned, uh, we are here with you from start to finish. Some of you will start off with us. Some of you will come in a different door, but you still have access to the advisors here at the 21st Century Scholar Program. Again, these advisors are specialized because they know the ins and outs of maintaining the scholarship, how that interfaces with your academic load and what you need to do to maintain your scholarships. And if there's something that occurs that disrupts your education, what you should do, the next steps you should take to make sure you're still in line with your scholarship requirements. Again, talked about the lead advisor and the academic uh, the assistant director lead advisor and the program associated the programming associated with her, uh, Rebecca Gascott, career advisor, Andrew Schwartz, Smarts program and academic recovery. So it's important to note that if you come to Indiana University and you have an academic stumble, we're here to support you. That is what our Smart program is. It's a program designed to make sure that you recover academically and that we can assist you in performing at the level that you know you're capable of performing at and also providing information to support you in growing in those areas that you discovered were challenging for you. So tutoring and study tables. Within our building, 300 North Eagleson Avenue, we have an area that's dedicated for you and a study table. What we have down there, we have granola bars, snacks, water uh, down there for you so that if you wanna in between classes come and study uh, and then go back to classes, if you want to just have a quiet place to study with free you know, snacks and water, that this is your place. Um, we offer tutoring through the Academic Support Center on campus. We pair some events uh, with their services so that you have access for tutoring. Uh, and when I say tutoring, I don't want uh, anyone to get in mind that this is because someone is in academic jeopardy. It can be used when you're in academic jeopardy, but this is more so to have the best study buddy possible. Um, for you to earn the A in the class. So that's really the purpose of the tutor. Um, they're there if you have some difficulty as well, but they're there, it should be a standard practice to utilize the tutor to make sure that you're able to achieve those higher grades while you're at Indiana University. Um, again, the study tables here, we typically have those from nine in the morning Monday through Thursday until 7 p.m. So anytime between those hours you want to come in and utilize the services, it's there for you. Uh, we also have on Fridays from 9 to 5, it's open for you to utilize. So we are here to provide that opportunity. And with the SMART program, there's opportunities that uh, you can utilize that tool, study tables, in a more structured manner. We have computer labs in the building throughout 
on the ground floor for you to use. In addition to having a few in the study tables area, we have a student lounge. Again, if you don't want a study environment and you still want to come to the building just to relax, we have a student lounge that has some computers that you can go to and enjoy and relax um, and do non-academic things or academic things, whatever you choose, it's your space. Mentoring partnerships. We have mentoring partnerships with the phase mentoring program. When you come during the summer to sign up for your fall classes, we have a mentor uh, sign-in form that you could take advantage of. You could sign up for this program. It's a wonderful program. Students that engage in this program usually obtain higher grades. Um, and it's the opportunity to have a peer, an upperclassman that's a student in a particular area that you choose, um, a particular academic area that you have the ability to say you want to have a, a mentor from this area um, to support you. We also have, again, doing study tables in that area, midterm and finals week preparation events. We typically have food, pizza, wings, sub sandwiches, something of that variety the week before midterms and into that week, the week before finals and into finals week as a motivation again for you to come study and be fueled while you study. Career and internship presentation designed to assist in the completion of scholarship requirements. So this is an opportunity for you, when I say a completion of scholarship requirements, when you think of coming to college, one thing you can just think of is that you're preparing yourself for your career. So what we do is we have presentations by corporate partners and others, opportunities for you to go to a career and internship fair, to hear about opportunities, to connect with potential employers, to learn about employers if you're unsure of where you want to go. This is the opportunity for you. 21st Century Scholarly Leadership Corps, uh, that's our student organization that you can get involved in. It's a great way to meet other scholars. Again, we have nearly 3,000 21st Century Scholars on the IU campus. Uh, they come in various doors, but you're all 21st Century Scholars with that common thread. And it's an opportunity for you to do a few things. Socialize, get to know other 21st century scholars and produce some activities that you want to do, uh, skating or any number of things uh, that you want to do as a group, karaoke, et cetera. The other division, there's three divisions. There's, there's that social element. There's one that develops you professionally. And also uh, that's the group that I pull from to do the panels that I mentioned. Students that are interested in speaking and sharing their experience with younger 21st century scholars to let them know what it's like to be a college student. And also they engage in, again, some professional development opportunities pairing with some of these career events. Then the last one is volunteer division where again, you can volunteer to do some community service in the Bloomington community or on campus. So that organization has three different divisions uh, that meet the needs of what scholars in the past said they like to do. Leadership development, again, within that organization is a leadership structure. Across campus, there's plenty of opportunities and plenty of organizations for you to get involved with to develop your leadership. And we offer much, much more. So we're a part of the division, as I mentioned, the Office for the Vice President, Diversity, Equity, and Multicultural Affairs. We have academic support centers underneath our umbrella. They're located in three different residence halls. They're open from seven until uh, 10 in the residence halls. We also have them located in culture centers across campus. Some of their representatives are at culture centers across campus. Again, to meet the academic support need that you may have with tutors. Uh, mentoring services and leadership development, I mentioned that with the phase mentoring program and being able to sign up to be a part of that and have a mentor. Hudson Holland Scholars Program 
is another scholarship program for high achieving students. Um, there are 21st century scholars that are part of that program as well. And then there's the group scholars program. There's 21st century scholars program students that are a part of the group scholars program as well. And there's other programs that are affiliated. Overseas studies programs, we have uh, two overseas studies programs, summer programs under our supervision. We have our own director of overseas studies and 21st century scholars typically make up a large portion of those students that take part in these overseas studies during the summer. Um, she also, the director also assists in completing applications for scholarship funding um, for overseas study opportunities. So it's another resource that we have that's there. When you're, at, when you're in college, this is the best time to see the world, learn about another country, and it's gonna cost you less because you're gonna be utilizing funding that's available here at the university. And one of the things is your scholarships that you receive as a 21st century scholar, they go towards the cost of this opportunity, your overseas opportunity. So you learn more when you come. Community and corporate partners events, I mentioned that. 21st century scholars can be part of multiple programs within OVP DEMA and outside of OVP DEMA. So you are not limited in the scope of what you can do and accomplish. Engagement and development. Again, here's a few pictures. Uh, on the left, top is a picture of past 21st century scholar leadership core leaders. Uh, they were at Bradford Woods learning about leadership and bonding as an executive body, uh, hiking in the woods, as well as having presentations on leadership. Um, the flyer in the middle, again, it describes one of the pre-college events that we have which is Next Steps College Conference. It's an opportunity for students to engage and to learn more about what we have to offer. The picture on the top right is an overseas studies picture. These students were traveling abroad. They were in Ghana, Africa when that picture was taken and they were very happy about the experience. The bottom left is an opportunity that students have through being a part of living learning centers. This is the Tom and Cy Atkins Living Learning Center. And it was an opportunity for them to go to Washington, DC, to learn about the African-American history and culture in Washington, DC. And also we toured the White House and we met with um, Senator's aide and a con Congressman and a Re House of Representatives aides. So it was an opportunity for us to connect on multiple levels and understanding, again, the role of a citizen, as well as history that's all around us with that particular theme of that community. Um, there are several different living learning centers. Some are around other cultures. Some are around majors, opportunities for or interests. There is a media LLC for those that are interested in media. They travel to New York and they have an opportunity to engage in media related activities in New York. I have a picture in the middle of one of our past Indiana University class presidents that was a 21st century scholar. And then the far bottom right is another picture of another overseas studies opportunity that students engaged in, they were in South America. So being engaged with the 21st Century Scholars program, coming to IU as a 21st Century Scholar has multiple benefits that you may not have uh, fully thought of uh, when you envision yourself as a collegiate scholar. So Cece, will you kick us off by introducing yourself? Malik? Unmute yourselves. 
Oh, sorry about that. I had my mic muted on on my end. Um, yeah, so yeah, how's it going, everyone? My name is Malik Carr. Uh, sorry about the headshot. It's a little bit old. I have a better one, I assure you. But yeah, I'm from Indianapolis, Indiana, and I am uh, getting ready to graduate this year. I'm a senior majoring in finance, and I attend the Kelly School of Business. Um, do we want to see if CC's here, or should I just like start talking about what I'm in? Uh, and walk with. Let's go ahead and start talking about what you're engaged in as right. a student. Cool. Yeah. So uh, I actually transferred here to IU um, my sophomore year. So uh, I came here to with the goal of getting into Kelly, which I did eventually. And uh, then from there, you know, I got really involved with everything that there was to offer on campus, a uh, bunch of different clubs, specifically the real estate club. Um, I know uh, Mr. Isom had mentioned earlier about all the opportunities uh, that exist here on campus to build yourself up both personally and professionally. And I surely did take advantage of those professional opportunities um, that are available through you know, all the different organizations that are here. So specifically, uh, not only the real estate club, but there's various workshops that you can get involved with you know, if you wanna take the Kelly route. Uh, that will give you a lot of career insight and specific industry experience, which I thought was extremely beneficial. Um, and probably the coolest thing that uh, I'm a part of or got to help to be a part of was um, a fund that we uh, raised at, at here at Kelly. And it's uh, actually one of the largest funds in the country now uh, for real that is undergraduate raised and operated. So that was something that's uh, pretty cool. But overall, my experience at IU has been extremely beneficial to me, especially being able to see what it was like being at a smaller college. Um, I went to the University of Finley, if anyone has heard of that. Uh, and, you know, just to compare the two, you know, it just seems like when I got here, it was endless opportunities for me. Uh, to advance myself in my career and position myself um, for success after college. So, uh, Cece, if you're available, please introduce yourself. Okay, I think she might be having technical issues too. So, I'm going to ask Malik a quick question. Well, do you have do any of you have any questions for Malik uh, before I ask him any questions myself? Please put them in the Q&A if you have any questions about him, uh, for him, or about Indiana University from a student's perspective. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to ask him the next question. What word of advice would you give these students at this stage, being juniors, rising seniors, what, what, what words of wisdom would you give them? Yeah, I would say definitely, you know, everything seems like it's coming pretty quick. And I would just say, you know, enjoy your time while you're in high school, because once you graduate, um, you do get a significant amount more freedom, but you know, there's nothing like those like high school days where I just used to goof around with my friends. Like obviously me being where I am today, I took my education very serious, but you know, don't take it for granted uh, while you're in high school and make the best out of it. Um, that being said, you know, make sure that you stay on top of your grades because, you know, I played sports when I was in high school and I thought, you know, the sports route was gonna take me to where I wanted to be, uh, but I got hurt unexpectedly and had to pivot. And because I always made sure that my grades were there, it kept a lot of doors open for me um, to eventually be in the position that I am today. So, um, you know, enjoy your time while you're there and just make sure you take care of what you have to and everything else falls in line. Awesome, awesome. So we talked about your involvement. Tell me, what were you able to do with professors in your school? Because again, the question is, I use a large institution. 
Uh, yeah. We heard the previous presentation from Lauren who said the ratio is a really good ratio faculty to student. Tell me, with your student org in organizations or campus involvement, how much did you get to engage with the faculty? Oh yeah, uh, I, I had an opportunity to engage with faculty in like every single class that I had. Um, like there's a couple of those classes that are larger, but for the most part, like there wasn't a class that I had where the teacher didn't know my name or didn't have the ability to. I never felt like I was in such a sea of people that I couldn't ask any questions. Uh, so uh, me being the type of person that I am, I ask a lot of questions. So um, yeah, I was able to pretty much have access to them whenever I needed to needed them. They had plenty of office hours. And uh, as far as like extra involvements with organizations, like we had like a faculty advisor that was able to help us see the way of, you know, hosting the various events and um, organizing our club meetings that, that we did over the school year. So awesome. CC, we're going to try to throw it to you again and see if you will be able to resolve the technical issue with your microphone. Please try to introduce yourself one more time. Okay, she's trying. No. Now I can hear you. There okay, you. wow, that was too difficult for how old I am, too. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll do quick introductions just chronologically. Um, I've been a part of the lecture board on Union Board, bringing different speakers to campus. I've worked in RPS dining. Um, I've worked at a study as a study table monitor for the 21st century scholars. Um, I've been able to travel abroad through an, a College of Arts and College of Arts and Sciences Aspire program to Salerno, Italy. Um, and I am I've interned for IR in the English department as a social media. Um, intern, and then I currently work as an Earn Indiana intern for the 21st Century Scholars. So share a little bit about your overseas studies experience and uh, the financial aspect of that. Yeah, so the Aspire programs are definitely some of the cheaper options because they are IU classes with IU professors all just like brought abroad. So it was my in-state tuition, which is covered by my 21st century scholars. Um, all my other scholarships still apply to the additional cost, which is around like $5,500, not including um, the plane ticket. Um, but I also got some Ovipedema abroad scholarships and like a honors scholarship and stuff that all applied there. And then I got a refund, you know, just to help me pay for any additional traveling costs and food or clothing or whatever I wanted to buy. So it was very affordable. Awesome. So there were other scholarships outside of your 21st Century Scholar and Covenant that you were very easily eligible to apply for and to get funded. Yes. And also just like as an English major, I got like my professors qualified me for some scholarships that I didn't even apply for and they just like emailed me and they put it on my financial aid and I was like, okay, cool. Awesome. So that goes back to this, the question I asked Malik. So it sounds like that relationship with your professors were very important. So share a little bit about that engagement that you had here with your professors. Yeah, I wouldn't say I necessarily like went to office hours the most and I wish I did, but I think even me just being in class, like almost every class, being able to participate, getting the professors to really know your name and like doing your best work already puts you in a good position for your professors to like you. And I think I really benefited from that, just like being very engaged and very happy to be in class because it is such a privilege to get a higher education. And I think that really set me apart from some of my classmates. Right, right. Share your words of wisdom for this age group. They're going into their senior year. They're starting to look more seriously at college and higher education. What would you like to say? Mm, that's such a good question. I definitely say be realistic, but also be willing to take a chance. 
Um, I wanted to go to Loyola Chicago. Oh, be flexible. Also, I wanted to go to Loyola Chicago. It was going to be 15k out of pocket. My parents could not afford it. I did not want to go to IU at all. But then I was like, I reevaluated. I realized this is the best place for me to go. And then I came and I kept an open mind. And it's been one of the best experiences I've ever had. And I've gotten so many opportunities just being open-minded and flexible on what you think you're going to do versus what you actually do. Um, like with my job I have after campus, I didn't plan on applying for a fellowship and getting it or working in tech as an English major, but being really flexible has kind of got me to this point and being able to like see these opportunities and really go for it. I think that'll make it so you're very successful during your college career. Awesome. Awesome. I know we're over time, uh, but I do want to have an opportunity for you to share what high schools you went to. Yeah, uh, I went to Lawrence North. I also went to Lawrence North. <laughs> okay, so Lawrence North is represented here to this evening uh, from Indianapolis. So we want to let you know that there will be other events taking place. There's opportunities now if you go to the website for certain summer camps that are taking students that will occur. And if you have any questions at all, here's our contact information. The contact information was in the chat. Um, you could reach us at any time. Uh, we are available for you. Uh, please take a moment to pull out your cell phones and use the QR code to please fill out this survey for us. Um, it's a way for us to gain feedback, to hear from you if you weren't vocal and you still had some questions or wish we would have covered a topic that wasn't represented. We wanna hear from you. Again, you are our objective, making sure you have the information to succeed and that's the purpose of this event. So please do this survey and that concludes our presentation.